हेलो एवरीवन आप सभी का फिर से एक बार स्वागत है मेरे यूट्यूब चैनल में जिसका नाम है कॉमर्स ट्रेजर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट के यू डी एम कॉम फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर एस ए पी एम दैट इज सिक्योरिटी एनालिसिस एंड पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजमेंट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड अ वीडियो ऑन मार्केटिंग मैनेजमेंट टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन एंड स्ट्रेटेजिक मैनेजमेंट टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चन इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन दैट वीडियो आई एम पुटिंग द लिंक इन टू द डिस्क्रिप्शन एज वेल एज इन द आई बटन टू वॉच दैट वीडियो and without wasting much time let us go to the two marks question of this paper the first question is what are real and financial assets so very simple real assets are the assets which generate income directly it is an economist concept these are used to produce goods and services that can increase the productive capacity of the economy they are usually tangible in nature that is we can see them and we can touch them Examples of real asset are land, plant, machinery, infrastructure, gold, etc. When we talk about financial assets, financial assets are the claims of the owner against the real assets. They are in paper form or electronic form. Just remember this: paper form or electronic form, and these are issued by either government or corporate bodies. That is the companies. It is an accountant's concept. and they add to the productivity of the economy indirectly it is intangible in nature because it is in paper form or usually it is in electronic form they cannot be seen examples are deposit in bank that is your fd savings rd etc shares debenture bonds etc so these are some points which you can remember for real asset and financial asset the next question is what are the new forms of holding gold so as we know gold is one of the precious stone which is a real asset also so people in olden days used to hold gold in the form of ornaments or jewelry or gold coins or gold bars but nowadays there are many new forms of gold so let us see what are the new forms of gold first e gold that is electronic gold then gold etf that is gold exchange traded funds are there then derivatives in gold are there that is gold option and gold futures then you can also invest in a company which is involved in gold mining business you can also invest in gold bullion securities which is called as gbs or you can invest in sovereign gold bonds so these are some of the new forms of holding gold state the assumptions of dow theory so dow theory is one of the oldest known theory of technical analysis it is one of the first theory to be established in technical analysis so the assumptions are as follows the first assumption is manipulation of primary trend is not possible so remember you cannot manipulate the primary trend secondary and the tertiary trend can be manipulated but not the primary trend this is the first assumption of dow theory the second assumption is market reflects all the available information that is everything to know is already reflected in the market through the price in simple it says that market knows everything and market discounts everything the third assumption is dow theory is not infallible which means that dow theory is just a theory to understand the market but it cannot beat the market so same is said hamilton and dow readily admit that dow theory is not a sure fire means of beating the market it is just a tool to understand the market but you cannot beat the market so these are the three assumptions what is indicated by triple top and triple bottom chart pattern now when you draw charts there are different patterns which comes in technical analysis and one among them is triple top and triple bottom so let us see how is triple top pattern so triple top pattern is something like this it has three tops so this is top number 1 top number 2 and top number 3 this is going to be your support level so whenever there is triple top bottom it shows that market are going to fall so it is a bearish type of market or it shows a bearish trend in the same way when we talk about triple bottom so when there are triple bottom that is first second and third and this becomes the support level so it always shows a market which is in uptrend or it is a bullish market so this is what you need to understand same applies to two top and two bottom so let us see triple top and triple bottom patterns are type 
of reversal chart patterns triple top bottom is a bearish as we saw so triple top is a bearish chart pattern that leads to trend change to downside which is coming down whereas triple bottom is a bullish so this is a bullish reversal pattern that leads to trend change to upside so this is how you have to understand the charts what is random walk theory now random walk theory is again a very important question so you have to understand whenever we talk about emh that is efficient market hypothesis random walk theory is also discussed so random walk theory suggests that change in stock market price have same distribution and are independent of each other therefore it assumes that past movement of the trend of a stock price or market cannot be used to predict its future movement so very simple it is nothing but random walk theory says that you cannot make use of the older price or the past price to predict the future price future price are independent of each other it is just like a random number in short random walk theory proclaims that stocks are random and unpredictable path that makes all methods of predicting stock incapable in the long run so simple prices of stocks are random in nature this is what random walk theory says what is covariance and how is it measured covariance is a measure of how much two random variables vary together it helps to assess relationship between two variables so very simple covariance helps to find out in which direction two variables are moving if they move in the same direction we say it is positively correlated if they move in opposite direction we say it is negatively correlated so it helps to find out how they are varying with each other now how do you measure covariance the formula for covariance is nothing but summation of i is equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar divided by n so if you are using for population then we have to divide it by n if you are using it for sample then we have to divide it by n minus 1 so just remember these two points population then divided by n if it is sample then divided by n minus 1 next question is what is systematic risk systematic risk is a risk that affects the entire market or the whole market and not just a single stock or a industry so whenever a risk is affecting the whole market or entire market then it is called as a systematic risk it is also called as market risk non diversifiable risk and non controllable risk because you cannot control systematic risk it is further divided into market risk inflation risk and interest risk so these type of risk are there for all the companies and all the industries but when we talk about opposite of this that is unsystematic risk so unsystematic risk are risk which affects only a single company or a specific company they can be diversified they can be controlled examples of systematic risk are national disaster weather events inflation changes interest rate changes war etc an example for unsystematic risk are financial risk business risk etc next question is differentiate between sml and cml so sml stands for security market line and cml stands for capital market line so let us see the difference between these two terms the measure of risk used in cml is standard deviation that is st whereas the measure of risk used in sml is beta so this is the first point of difference for cml we make use of standard deviation for sml we make use of beta in cml only efficient portfolios are on the line whereas in sml all the stocks must be on the line so whenever we draw these lines in cml all the efficient portfolio are going to be on that particular line but in sml all the stocks or all the securities will be there in cml returns cannot be negative as sd cannot be negative but in sml returns can be negative because beta can be negative so when we compute your cml line will be something like this it is always starting from risk free rate of return and it is always positive but when we talk about 
SML that is security market line it can be on negative side also and positive side also because beta can be negative. Fourth point CML is applicable to portfolios whereas SML is applicable to individual securities. And last point in CML both systematic and unsystematic risk is considered but for SML only systematic risk is considered because we are using beta in this case. So apart from this, you can also write definition for differentiation. You can also write the formulas for differentiating between SML and CML line. What is factor loading? Factor loading is basically the correlation coefficient for the variable and the factor. Factor loading shows the variance explained by variable on that particular factor. Now, for example, if the quantity demanded is changing of a particular product now it can change because of varieties of factor so each factor how much they are contributing to change those are called as factor loading so factor one is contributing maybe 70 percent factor two is contributing 20 percent factor three is contributing five percent so these are called as factor loading it explains how much variance is happening because of each individual factors. The factor loading express the relationship between each variable to the underlying factor. The last question of this paper was give the meaning of arbitrage. Now very simple arbitrage is an act of buying securities, commodities or currencies from one market where prices are less and selling the same in another market where prices are high. So what do you do? You buy from a market where prices are less, you sell into a market where prices are more. This is what is called as arbitrage. It makes use of difference in the price in two markets and by taking advantage, they make profit which are called as arbitrage profit. For example, if you buy a dollar in India at rupees 75 and sell it in Japan market at rupees 80, then this is called as arbitrage process and you do this in order to earn profit. So this is all about 2021 paper. If you have any doubts, you can comment me in the comment box. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon so that you can get a notification as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you for watching this video and we will meet again with another video.